Hello there. Welcome to my show. COVID-19 update by Gerard for July 31st, 2020. Last day in July. Uh, and um, I do have some happy news for DC, Washington DC area. And that is um, Mayor uh, Boyer, uh, Bowser, and um, uh, Chancellor of District of Columbia Public Schools, DCPS, have announced that um, Washington, D.C., our nation's capital, the United States of America, uh, will have 100% online classes for fall 2020. Yeah, so I'm excited. Uh, Mayor Bowser gave me uh, a high five. You know, as you know, I've been um, uh, kind of advocating for the students and teachers and families and this whole area to save lives. So I've been advocating to close down campuses and 100% um, online education. So I'm two for two. I've been advocating for um, Georgetown University to go 100% online, and they are. Um, and I've been advocating for weeks and weeks. I've been quitting that. I've been quitting the Hoya, <laughs> you know, so make sure they cover it, <laughs> you know. Uh, the Hoya is a, a Georgetown University newspaper. We are in summer though, but anyway, you know, the staff can, <laughs> can get the tweets. Um, and District of Columbia Public Schools, I, you know, as you know, I, um, I am uh, a labor union leader. I'm part of uh, Local 6, American Federation of Teachers, Local 6, AFT. Um, and, uh, you know, I was elected by my fellow uh, union members and AFT Local 6 to go to uh, Pittsburgh in 2018 to National uh, American Federation of Teachers uh, Convention. Uh, we're a union of about two million members. So I represented my local six uh, AFT, uh, Washington DC teachers. Um, so, you know, uh, and I am a uh, elementary school teacher at Savoy Elementary School, which is in uh, uh, Ward 8, Anacostia neighborhood of Washington DC. Uh, and my school is 100% African American. Um, and uh, so I've been advocating to save their lives. You know, I don't want any of my students to die. So I've been advocating to uh, save their lives and lives of their parents and my fellow teachers, because you know, I've shared several weeks ago. I'm worried like my fellow teachers and several elementary teachers will die because most of them are overweight. No offense, I'm not trying to be mean or anything. I'm overweight, so, <laughs> so I guess I can talk about it. Uh, but, you know, overweight people generally are, you know, have a higher chance of dying, you know. So, I, you know, I don't want to hear my friends to die, you know, my teachers, fellow teachers, in several elementary schools. So I'm excited that, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Bowser and uh, Chancellor, they're doing the right thing, closing down the school building and uh, going 100% on life. That's the right thing to do. We have to save lives. Because what good is it if the teachers are dead? They can't teach anymore. What good is it if the students are dead? What good is high school diploma if they're dead? You know what, you know, and their parents are residents of District of Columbia. We don't want them to die, you know? So, uh, so it's the right decision, Mayor Bowser. I'm proud of you for making that decision. So I give you a high five, you gave me a high five. So I, you know, I, I include uh, Mayor Bowser on my tweets about DC and DC Public Schools. As you know, I know Mayor Bowser. I, you know, I see her in uh, AFT, uh, American Federation of Teachers, uh, um, you know, events, you know, like Fish and Fry by our, uh, uh, the new uh, the VTU, Washington Teachers Union President, Davis. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I have photo with her and everything. Oh, she's a nice person, you know, I like her. Um, yeah, and um, yeah, so I, I knew she would do the right thing, you know, she has a good heart, you know. I really like her. I uh, I thought about you know maybe working for uh, you know her in the city council, you know with uh, you know uh, District of Columbia educational system, but you know like 
and at a larger citywide level, but you know, that was like you know, a few years ago. But I guess I, you know, I, I just to nursing school. So I am a full-time nursing student uh, at Georgetown University, as you know, and I'm graduating in August. Yes, I'm one week away from my final class at Georgetown University. Next Friday is my last day at Georgetown University. It's the last day of the summer term. Last day, it's the end of summer term, not next Friday. August 7th, so it's exciting, I'm excited. I mean, you know, I, I love Georgetown, but I, you know, I, I've been there for two years, like 365 days a year, nonstop. For two years, and it's like fall semester, some, spring semester, summer semester, fall semester, spring semester, summer semester, six semester, full time. I've been working like a dog. I mean, I've been literally working like a dog at Georgetown University, um, studying uh, to save your life. You know, and um, so uh, I've been working hard, you know, oh my gosh, all I did is work, 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 you know, and um, yeah, so I mean, my time was very precious. I wouldn't give my time to anybody unless I care about them, you know, because sometimes you have to give time because you're long, you know, but, you know, uh, yeah, but I mean, I, I, I wanted to do well and I have my 3.49 GPA. Uh, at Georgetown University, which is like an A minus GPA, I'm very proud of of me. Uh, and uh, so, um, yeah, so I'm uh, I'm happy to be uh, at Georgetown, doing so well at Georgetown University. Uh, and uh, yeah, three point four five. You know, I uh, uh, I uh, emailed uh, Professor uh, Haras, uh, Barry Haras, who's uh, I guess she's the president of the Sigma. Sigma uh, at Georgetown. Sigma is the International Honor Society at Georgetown U University. So Georgetown University School of Nursing, there's a chapter of Sigma, which is like the International Honor Society of uh, jo uh, jo uh, you know, like nursing. Uh, and uh, so I'm like, I know I said, you know, I have like 3.49 GPA, a Wednesday indu induction ceremony for Sigma. <laughs> because you know, I mean, you know, uh, I deserve to be in the Nursing Honor Society. And um, so, uh, uh, so I, I emailed her like on Thursday and uh, so she's, she's like, uh, you know, she's the president, I guess, uh, at, at Georgetown. Uh, she's one of the professors at Georgetown. But she's like, the clinical nurse leader program, uh, Professor Sarah Vitone takes care of that. So she emailed uh, me and uh, she carbon copied uh, Professor Sarah Vitone. So hopefully, uh, you know, I'll, you know, I'll be inducted into uh, Georgetown University Sigma <laughs> because you know we're headed toward the end, end of the semester now. You know, I do have three point four nine GPA, uh, and I got an A in Professor Vitor's class for the summer. You know, you know, my, all of my uh, grades they counted up to an A, so that means my GPA is above three point five. So, um. I, to be honest with you, the cutoff line is 3.5, but I mean, you know, if you round it up, 3.49 is 3.5. And since I got an A in Professor Sarah Vitone's uh, uh, nursing ethics class in the summer, I mean, that's yet to go on the transcript because in the summer I took two classes, nursing ethics with Professor Vitone, that's an A, and, uh, you know, the practicum class, and, you know, I have an A attitude there now, so I expect to get A on that. So, um, yeah, so I, I should be inducted into Sigma. So I, I want to be for active. So I didn't know who the, who the person in charge was. I just emailed the president, you know, Professor um, uh, Haras, uh, and then she emailed me back and, uh, you know, carbon copied Professor Sarah Vitone. So hopefully, uh, Professor Sarah Vitone will do the right thing and induct me into Sigma <laughs> because I deserve to be in the Nursing Honor Society at Georgetown because I'm such a good nurse, you know? I mean, I'm like an A minus average. Uh, you know, and I, I, you know, I've served Georgetown University community in, in many capacities as a servant leader, like as the vice president of Georgetown of uh, graduate student government dead job. My term went from May to May, May 2009 to May 2020. And I was the president of, uh, uh, you know, uh, Georgetown Collaborative Diplomacy Initiative from, you know, uh, academic year 2019 to 2020. Uh, you know, that's a, you know, working on diplomacy issues, and I 
we held a you know Chinese New Year celebration 2019. That year, the greatest one, in the history of uh, Georgetown. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you know not a lot to serve Georgetown University of Community. So uh, yeah, I deserve to be uh, inducted into that. You know, excellent nursing student. Uh, I uh, I'm great at clinical settings. I you know I have high praises. Um, great grades and that, uh, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, my clinical professors love me, you know, just, you know, they, I mean, I, I want to learn from them, I respect them, I try my best to learn as much as I can, I'm really good, I'm very careful, uh, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, you know, so I, I, I you know, I mean, um, so it was just, you know, like yesterday, I guess it's today, early morning, uh, that Professor Haas, uh, President of Stigma at Georgetown, you know, the International Honor Society and Nursing, uh, chapter president, and she's a professor, uh, uh, who emailed me and then Carbon Hopkins Professor Charlie Trump. So, you know, hopefully, you know, keep my fingers crossed, I'll be inducted in uh, uh, before graduation. <laughs> she, you know, she emailed me and she said, generally, you know, you know it's a COVID 19 era, so it's a little bit, there's a lot of confusion because of that. Uh, and so it should be like at the end of the year, like you know, the middle graduation. So, uh, or, you know, completion of the program. So, yeah, so, you know, <laughs> you know, that'd be good. Um, yeah, I'd love to like, you know, kind of get involved with uh, annual Sigma, you know, convention, Canva. You know, that brings together, you know, people from all over the country. So that'd be like something that I'd love to do, you know, is that post a presentation or research in nursing? Yeah, I was, uh, um, you know, when I was uh, asked uh, in an interview uh, at uh, Virginia Hospital Center, that's where I'm going to work, yay, I'm so excited about that. I'm starting at Virginia Hospital Center, you would like see me, can I come to Virginia Hospital Center and say hello to me, you know? I'll be working as a nurse, you know, and so I'm really excited. Um, so they asked me, you know, what kind of things I want to do, and I, I said, you know, I want to get involved in, like, research as well. Uh, so, you know, and we call that evidence-based research, um, EBR, uh, and so uh, and what we do is we research and we figure out ways to improve taking care of patients. So, so I like research. So I would like to do that and then present my research at a conference, a uh, nursing conference, and one of the conferences is a Sigma conference in that annual combo. And so I love to go to annual combo and present my stuff, that things I do at Virginia Hospital Center. So I think the annual combo, uh, I think it's in December. So, um, yeah, I think it's like December. Maybe, I don't know if it's still different. Yeah, but again, you know, I gotta look into that and then uh, maybe submit research uh, before the deadline. I don't know what the deadline is to you know, submit stuff, but uh, yeah, I gotta look into that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, I want to cheer from my fellow uh, CNL numbers, you know, we're one week from finishing our class. End of class. We're one week from finishing end of our class. Yay! CNL, CNL, 2020, CNL, CNL, 2020, Georgetown University. Yay! Uh, so, um, yeah, so I'm really excited, you know. Uh, so I'm, uh, yeah, so I, I'm really excited to be working at Georgia Hospital Center. But to be honest with you, I, mean, I don't know if I should share this on screen because, you know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, you know? I'm a nice guy. I hate hurting people's feelings, you know? But, you know, what the hey, you know? I, you know, I am, uh, you know, 100% transparent in my show, COVID-19 update by Iraq. I'm 100% transparent in my uh, election campaign. You know exactly what I stand for. Uh, and, you know, if you want to support me, vote for me. If you want to, if you do not want to support me, don't vote for me. It's just freedom. You have the freedom as an American to vote for whoever you want. I hope you vote for me, you know, but I'm not going to lie to you to get your votes. You know, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you like what I say, vote for me. If you don't like what I say, don't vote for me, you know. And you're free. You're a free man. You're not a slave. So, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I, I, I will tell you. Yeah, I will tell you. Actually... My first choice when I was applying for nursing positions uh, was Virginia Hospital Center. <laughs> it was. That was my number one first choice. 
That's the one I really, really, really wanted. And I think I mentioned, like, I wanted Virginia Hospital Center in this show several times. I didn't say it was my first choice, but I'm sharing it now since, you know, uh, they offered me the job and I, I've accepted. And I had a, a you know, drug test, drug urine test for, on Thursday um, morning. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the one in Carlin Springs. Those of you who live in, uh, uh, in Arlington, you know, uh, there's uh, in Carlin Springs Road, uh, there's, uh, you know, Quest Diagnostics. Uh, and so, um, so, you know, uh, Virginia Hospital sort of sent me there. So I went there and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was exciting, you know. Uh, person, you know, person kind of uh, processing everything, was asking me and talking to me, we are talking about, the, you know, and she's like, well, how do your parents feel about you uh, working as a nurse, you know? Uh, I visited the hospital center, you know, and uh, you know, and this COVID nineteen everything that just meant, I guess. Oh yeah, it's great. they love it, you know. Uh, they want me to save lives, you know. So, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, uh, my sister like uh, texted me and she's like, oh, you know, your hospital, uh, yeah, you know, uh, they may have one of those uh, uh, student loan forgiveness programs, you know. Because you know, I bought two hundred thousand dollars. For the Masters of Science program at Georgetown University, two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, we're talking about a serious amount of money, here. you know. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so, so. I mean, you know, and you know, over uh, with interest. You know, I'm paying my two hundred thousand dollars loan from Georgetown to study at Georgetown back over thirty year period, and capitalized with interest, it's like five hundred thousand dollars. That comes out to like my paying that five hundred thousand dollars. So, uh, geez, you know, so I need all the loan forgiveness I could get. So my sister texted me like a link to that. I'm like, you know, my sisters love me, and she has the little sisters, you know. So um, they care about me and stuff. So they all support me, you know. I in my trying to save lives. Uh, so uh, my whole family is really excited. It's too bad that they couldn't come to physically come to celebrate my graduation and dinner ceremony, you know, because I'm really looking forward to that. But, uh, yeah, but anyhow, you know, uh, once this COVID thing dies down, they can come come, uh, come, and, you know, see me at work and everything. But right now, you know, because of COVID, you know, I'm like, hey, stick where you are, <laughs> you know. I mean, it's not a time to move around outside of uh, your state. Um, well, I mean, you can move around outside of your state, but, you know, you have to switch a distance. So, the safest thing now is, as long as you're moving around with people in your household, you're fine, safe, right? But I've been at the I'm studying, and I haven't been like in Delaware, my, my, where my sister and my parents are. So it's probably not safe for me to go there now, you know, because I'm here, they're there. So it's safe for them to like mingle and do stuff together because they live together. You know, so I just want to take precautions because my parents are, you know, older, you know, you don't want, you know, uh, to be risky, you know, so, um, yeah, so, like, you know, that's why I said early on in March, if you remember, if you saw my show, I said in March, every family should bring their father, mother, like grandfather, grandmother, in back into their home and take care of them there. You know, don't let your grandfather, grandmother die alone. So, if you see my show from April, I said, you know, you should make your home like a, 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 a unit, social unit. So you bring your mom and dad home, you have your children there, you and your wife are there. All of you are safe there, you know, because you guys are close together. As long as you don't bring COVID into that environment, all of you are safe. So you could do a lot of stuff together, like as a family. You could like drive in your car to Virginia Beach or Ocean City. As long as you're not talking to anyone else, wearing your mask, don't eat inside a restaurant or go for inside a cafe or a bar. As long as you're outside, wearing a mask, just with you people, your family together, it's fine. You can talk to each other, you always do that at home anyway. Uh, so in the beach, you can stay together as a family uh, and, um, you know, have fun at the beach. I mean, CGI, I forgot to say, have fun. Go to the beach, you only have one month left. That means like four Saturdays. You only have four Saturdays left in the beach. After that, there's no more beach. Yeah, so go to the beach tomorrow. Yeah, of course. Don't miss out. 
I mean, geez. I mean, you only have four more Saturdays left. Four more Saturdays. So go to the beach. Yeah, have fun. Because as I said, winter's going to be horrible. There's going to be no fun. No movie theaters open. No bars open. No restaurants open. No bowling alleys open. Nothing will be open in the winter. Yeah, it's going to be hibernation period, except you're not hibernating. You're wide awake. It's going to be like hell. Like every day of winter will be hell. So have all the fun you can right now. Make some fun books that you can look at during winter, you know. Um, yeah, and you got to squeeze in all the fun right now. Because in the winter, it's going to be horrible. Um, yeah. So I, I still encourage the family to come together and live together on the one roof. Because that's the safest. You can't really go around meeting new people. Because if you get COVID, you can give them COVID. I mean, you know, it's just, you don't know who has COVID. I mean, yeah, it's still confusing. Um, but if you're with your family unit and you don't do anything risky, you know, your family's safe. So let's keep it that way. So yeah, I mean, family unit is your socialization unit. So high school seniors who graduated from high school, you should go off to college. Stay at home, take care of your mom and dad. They're getting older. If they get COVID, they will need your help. So don't go to like a college somewhere. I mean, you, you want to go off to college and then your parents get COVID and they die? I mean, you know, because they need people to take care of them if they get COVID. Like your mom and dad, let's say they're 40. Your mom is 40, your dad's 40. If you go off to college at, you know, Louisiana, Louisiana State University, and your mom and dad get COVID, both of them get COVID, they need someone to take care of them. You're not there. Who's going to come and take care of them? They're going to die. And it's going to be your fault. So uh, don't, don't, don't let your mom and dad die. I'm telling you, you seniors, don't go off to college. You need to be at home because your mom and dad, they get COVID, they need you to take care of them. You see what I'm saying? You are the one. You're the hero. You're the hero of your mom and dad. In the age of COVID, you're the one who can save your mom and dad's life. Why not be the hero of your mom and dad by staying at home? Do your 100% college education online? Because smart colleges are going to let you do that, 100% of education online. So just 100% education online. Um, if, um, if your college does not offer you that option, then, um, you know, Take a year off. You know, take some community college classes online because, you know, here in Virginia, you could do that. Nova Community College, you could take 100% of the courses online. You could get some college credits, you could transfer it to your college, you know, it's much cheaper. Um, yeah. So um, if your college offers online, just do the online version, stay at home because you want to be the hero of your mom and dad. Because your mom and dad could get COVID and they could die if you're not there. Because the flu season is coming, let's say your mom gets flu, your dad gets COVID, and both of them dad have flu and COVID. If you're at home, you know, your mom and dad won't have to move around at all. You could go and buy the food, you could go and cook the food, you could go and take care of your mom, make sure they take the medications they need to, right? Because they're both sick, but you're not. You know, you're young, you're like 18, you take care of your mom, you save your mom's life, you can save your dad's life. This is your chance to be a hero. Don't go off to college right now. Because what if your mom dies and what if your dad dies? That's because you weren't there. If you were there, your mom and dad would not have died. You know, you know, I love my younger sisters. You know, one of my sisters, she, she takes care of my mom. She's focused on that. You know, if it went for her, you know, who knows what would have happened? My mom might have passed away like a couple years, two, three years ago. You, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, maybe I'll talk more about it another time, but she basically saved her life, you know, because she, she's dedicating her life to, like, taking care of my mom uh, and my dad. So, you know, she's like, you know, I mean, she does her stuff, but, you know, like she's living there physically, you know, with mom and dad and taking care of them. Uh, and that's why, you know, my mom, you know, that's why she's alive. You know, and my dad, she's relatively healthy, but, you know, if she weren't there, you know, he might not be so healthy, you know? She cooks breakfast, lunch, and dinner, special food to cater their uh, dietary needs. You know, and she makes sure they take the medication on time, go to uh, the, the hospital uh, visits on time. You know, you know, because sometimes older Americans die because they miss taking the medication. Yeah, there are a lot of, there are thousands of older adults who die every year 
do they forget to take the medication or they took the medication but they take it again and they forget that they've taken it so they take it again so they overdose on their own drug and die because they forgot so it's safer to have your mom and dad live with you really you know what i'm saying uh even if they don't have any condition it's just safer in case they get a cold or flu because a lot of americans die from pneumonia that comes from cold or flu uh so if your mom and dad are over 40 they could die from flu during COVID-19 flu season um yeah so this is the time that you want to yeah you don't want to be joking around here about uh, COVID-19 um yeah so um yeah so stay at home don't go off to college uh because you you'll live to regret it especially if your mom and dad dies while you're in college just think about it if your mom and dad got sick with COVID or flu or common cold if it's not during COVID-19 era there are a lot of things they could do they could have friends relatives cousins come over and help them neighbors it's COVID-19 nobody's going to come over to help them they're going to die alone Especially those of you who have single mothers, don't go off to college, you know, you don't, you're not going to end up dead. No, literally, if she's over 40, uh, she's in the age where she could die from COVID. If she's overweight, you can see if your mom's overweight, right? Yeah, she could die. So, um, yeah, I would say don't go to college if you're a college student. Um, you, you, don't, you need to be there to be the hero of your mom and dad if they get COVID-19. This is how America will survive together. America will not survive together if 18, 19, 20 year olds go off to college, leaving their 40 year old mom and dad alone, you know, and then they die because they get COVID and there's no one to take care of them. That's not how America lives. A, that's not how America survives COVID. America survives COVID because 18, 19, 20, 21 year old um, high school student, graduates, college students, they, uh, they take up the challenge to be the hero of their mom and dad. That's how America lives together, right? I mean, you don't want to die alone. You want to live together. You want to survive together. So that's why I, 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 I am calling for colleges to close out. This is where I totally disagree with anybody, Republican or Democrat, who are saying, like, open up colleges, like, you know, in, in uh, Pennsylvania, Democratic governor, uh, Tom Wall, he's like, we're not closing down at all. We're going to have everything open. You know, such, that's such a bad attitude. You know, I mean, he supports abortion, so he probably wants all the babies killed. Uh, you know, he, he probably doesn't care if uh, Pennsylvania's died from COVID. You see, these Democrats don't have respect for life. I'm telling you that people who are willing to let people kill babies through abortion, they don't respect life. So they're not, they don't care if your mom and dad dies. I hear our Christian team independent candidate. If you ask Congress and Bridges, they, they, they say, I care about your life. I care about your family's life. I stand against abortion. I don't think you should kill a baby, even if you're raped. Right, just because you're raped, you should kill your baby? That doesn't make sense. No abortion, even if you're raped. But just because you're raped, you're going to hate your baby? What kind of attitude is that? Yeah, you should not get abortion and kill your baby, even if you're raped. Even if it's a child of incest, you should not kill your baby. You know why? Uh, in the Bible, you know, you have Lot, you know, who's uh, Abram's nephew, and he had sex with his two daughters. Obviously, you should not have sex with your family uh, members, but you said, you know, husband and wife. But they did not kill the baby, right? Just because it's a child of incest doesn't mean the child deserves to die, because the child's life is has value. The child did nothing wrong, right? So let's say you get raped by someone who's a family member and you still have a baby, you should not kill that baby because murder is murder. It doesn't matter. Because the child didn't do anything wrong, right? Why are you killing the child? That's wrong. So no, no abortion in the case of incest, no abortion in the case of rape, no abortion for any reason, you know? And if your mother and, you know, there's a situation where they're saying like, if you don't kill the baby or work the baby, you, you may die. If you love your wife, child, when you risk that, because there's a chance that you and your baby can survive, right? So I don't believe that you should kill the baby even when the wife's mother's life is in danger.
There is no reason, valid reason why you should be killing a baby for any reason. And that's the official Vatican position. I love the Vatican because Vatican understands that you should not kill a baby for any reason. Right? Right? You know how many children of rape have become great Christian leaders in the history of Christian church? You know how many children of incest have become great Christian leaders in the history of Christian church? Obviously, they don't talk about it because they try to hide that, but these things exist, you know? Don't kill a baby because of what happened. You know, that's not right. It's not right. Obviously, you know, you should not have sex before marriage. You should not be alone with some other guy uh, opening up a chance for rape, right? Because if a woman gets raped, it's 50% her fault. Right, in many cases, because she put herself in a situation where she could be raped. Right? I mean, you know, she doesn't have to go to his room alone and she, you know, um, middle of nowhere, right? Um, you know, she don't have to drink alcohol alone with a guy, right? I mean, obviously he should not rape her, but she put herself in a situation where she made herself vulnerable. So it's partly her fault too. You know, every time a woman is raped, it's fifty percent woman's fault, fifty percent man's fault. You can never say it's 100% man's fault. Because like, let's say you're sleeping in the bed with your friend and your friend rapes you, who's a male. Well, who, why did you let him sleep in your bed? So it's your fault. I mean, it's just error in judgment. You made the bad judgment, right? So um, it's partly your fault. So don't do things that's gonna put you yourself in a situation where you can get raped. I mean, that's just stupid. It's like walking alone at night, you know, uh, with tank top and mini skirt, middle of the night, you know, like when there's no one around. I mean, you just ask them to be raped. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you should be raped. You should not be raped. But if you, you shouldn't be walking alone by yourself at night, right? It's a bad judgment. Uh, so, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, every time a woman is raped, it's 50% her fault. Because she put herself in a situation where she could be raped, right? And obviously, uh, you know, parents will teach their daughters not to put themselves in a situation where they'll be raped. So uh, make sure you provide this kind of education at home, right? Um, yeah. So, um, yeah, so this is important. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so mayor uh, of Washington, D.C. Uh, public schools uh, and chancellor of Washington, D.C. public schools uh, so it's going to be 100% online education. So that's for all of Washington, D.C., every single school in Washington, D.C. So that's, um, that's the good decision because that's how you save lives of, like, federal agents because their children all go to school in Washington, D.C., right? Senators, you know, and now they, don't, they, they can stay home, learn from home. That way, you know, uh, we're not going to have all these FBI agents dropping dead from COVID, you know, uh, Homeland Security agents. <laughs> you know, we need them to live. So as long as the children are going to school from home, you know, we're safe. And obviously the parents should always do a drug sleep because you may think your child is like an angel, but he may not be. So you need to search his home, his room, and to see if there are any drugs. And you gotta make sure your kids who are on drugs get off drugs. That's your responsibility as parents. It can easily be done with your children at home and you being the kind of parent you need to be, right? I say Trump is lying when he says, and he doesn't say this, so Trump is not lying, but there are some people in the Trump team who lies, and they said, uh, we need to get students back in school because we need to get them to stop doing drugs. I'm like, where do you think they get drugs? Students, high school students, middle school students, elementary students get drugs at the school, right? You know that. So if, if the children are 100% not going to school, they, they, it's going to be hard for them to get drugs. Of course the rate of drug usage will go down. I mean, so Trump team, you lie. You lie when you say, we need to open up schools uh, to reduce uh, drug usage, you lie. Because if everybody is at home, right, learning from home, mom and dad are at home, they can monitor the children to see if they're doing drugs. Right? So, yeah, I mean, children not going to school is a way to solve drug problem in America. You know, like Jared Kushner is a rich billionaire, Ivanka Trump. So they, you know, 
what they say, I, I just don't believe, you know? I'm a normal American, I'm a hardworking American. I teach in the public school system. I know how real people live. And I know that drug problem will be reduced when we close down schools and make sure the kids learn at home. Parents are at home, they can take care of their kids. You know, um, the drug problem will go down. So I say the Trump team is lying. Uh, not all, not Trump team itself is lying, but there are members of the Trump team who sent out tweets saying, oh, we need to send children back to school to reduce drug problem. I'm like, that's a lie. Children do drugs because they're at school, because they are with their friends who do drugs. Do you think children do drugs at home? I mean, there are some children who do drugs at home, but most of the drug usage for middle school, elementary, high school kids in public school, it happens in school. You know, they do it together. You know, it's at aim. I'm a public school teacher, so I know. I told eighth graders, I had students who do drugs. You know, like I had one student at Petersburg, Peabody Middle School, which is now Raven Johnson Middle School. I had one student who came to school 10 a.m. every day, smelling of marijuana every day. And she came at 10 a.m. because that was the math class and you know, everybody loved me. You know, I'm like an awesome teacher, teacher that everybody loves. So like students did not want to miss my class. So like, I don't know where the heck she was. You know, she's not in my own room, but she would always come to my math class at 10. You know, like when, when the clock hit 10, she would show up, she would knock on my door, and I open, she's like smelling of marijuana, and she's like coming and sitting down and, and you know, learning math from me. You know, for like an hour, 30 minutes, math class. I don't know what she does after that. Maybe she goes back home. I don't know, but she, she goes, comes to my class. All the students come to my class. When I, when I teach in a school, I have like zero absence. absence. I have zero absence because all my students love me. They want to see me. They want to learn from me. I mean, we have zero absence. I, you know, it's like people look at me and they're like, this is strange, you know. How do you have like nobody missing school? I'm like, but that's how school should be. Why should we, students not come to school? You know, I mean, like, I never had a situation where students don't come to school. Like, every time I, I teach, I'm like 100% attendance rate every day. You know? Yeah. That's, that's the kind of teacher I am. I inspire my students, even gang members. I had a student at Peabody Middle School who was part of a gang, and he's like, I got a gun. You know, he's an eighth grader. He's like, you know, he's not that old. You know, he's like, like 13 or 14, but he's like, I have a gun. I'm like, okay, so what do you want me to do? <laughs> and I'm like, what do you what do you want me to say? You know? Uh, he's like, I got a gun. I can shoot you with it. I said. Yeah, I hope you don't shoot me with it, you know? I mean, I don't know what else to say, you know? And I'm like, but I expect you to, at, at school to behave and learn math. And he's like, <laughs> you know, it's like, he went back to his seat, <laughs> you know? I just sat down, you know? But, uh, you know, I love my students. You know, they know I love my, you know, they know I love them. So, uh, but you know, like, children do you know, a lot. School is where it happens, you know? Like they pass drugs on each other. You know, kids don't do drugs alone generally, right? They, they do drugs with their friends. So uh, if we close down schools, that's one way to solve the drug problem. And I hear a person can be independent candidate for the U.S. Congress and Business Aid District. I propose that FBI, DEA, should be uh, called by President Trump to do a drug sweep throughout the United States of America. We need to end the drug problem. This is the time to do it. We need to go and sweep the neighborhood, arrest all the gang members, mandatory capital punishment for drug suppliers. We, we gotta get rid of the, the drug problem in America. This is the time to do it. So um, we. So there are three things we could do. Close down schools to save lives. We need to save lives. Second thing, let's get rid of the drug problem by arresting like drug suppliers. Mandatory capital punishment for like, drug supplies, you know, um, yeah. We need to clog up our country, but our country uh, needs to be cleaned up. Drug problem needs to be gone away, right? Um, yeah, but this is the best thing that happened to America in terms of drug problem, right? You cannot do drugs when you're at home. 
right? With parents. Yeah, so we need to solve the drug problem now. Um, parents, you need to talk to your children about not doing drugs. Search their rooms. Monitor them. Be good parents, you know? Make sure they don't do drugs. You know, say no to drugs. Say no to marijuana. Say no to all drugs. It's not a time to do drugs. It's not time to drink alcohol. You know, be sober minded. You know, there's death knocking at your door. You know, um, but yes, yeah, so I, I totally disagree with members of the President Trump team who said we need to open up schools to solve drug problems. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know what you're talking about. Drug problems happen at school. School is where kids learn how to do drugs. So, I mean, geez, you know, uh, everybody knows that. Obviously, you know, uh, I'm an educator in the public school system, and I'm trying to improve inner city public schools, as you know. So I'm writing my doctoral dissertation on how to improve inner city public schools and education system. So I care about the inner city students and um, the school system, but we have to recognize much of the community problem is happening uh, in the school context, right? So we have to figure out how to change that, right? Because school should be a positive force where drugs are not done. There's a reduction in drugs, right? So obviously these are issues that we have to talk about and think about, but shutting down public schools is not a bad thing. Because when the children are at home and they're under the guidance of their parents, they do better. So Trump team, you're full of it. You're full of it. This is why I'll never work for Team Trump. Even if they pay me a million dollars a month, I will never work for Team Trump because there are some idiots in Team Trump who say idiotic stuff like this. They're like, oh yeah, that's like idiotic stuff number one. The Trump team, not all Trump team. I'm not saying it's official. There are members in the Trump team who are saying, we need to open up schools because you know, when we bring children to schools, public schools, drug problem is reduced. I'm like, what? There's no research that supports that. All the research says drug problems happen at school. That's like all the research. So I'm like, the Trump team, these are like a bunch of billionaires. We're out of touch with reality. You know what I'm saying? We're out of touch with reality. And this is why I will never work for Team Trump. Because, geez, I mean, I don't want to explain every time to Team Trump what America's like, bunch of billionaires. I'm like, geez, you know, I, who has the time? I mean, it's like, I mean, this is like common sense. I mean, drug problems happen in public schools. Drug, kids who don't do drugs learn to do drugs in school. I mean, geez, who doesn't know this? I mean, this is like a basic information that Trump team doesn't seem to understand. I'm like, I will never work for Team Trump. It's like a bunch of idiots in there, you know? Um, you know, because like one of the things that you want is like you want to work for an organization where there are people who are kind of smart and interesting. And like, I don't know a single person in Team Trump that, you know, I mean, I know some people who support Trump. People who support Trump, they're very intelligent, but I mean, I don't know too many people in Team Trump, like people who are paid by Team Trump, uh, who are saying smart things, you know? I mean, Ivanka Trump, Jerry Kushner, they're out of reality, touch with reality. A bunch of rich kids who never suffered in their life. Um, what do they know about suffering? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so I'm like, I don't want to be around these, like, fake people. I, mean, I like Trump. He's a self-made billionaire. I, I respect Trump. I like Trump. So, you know, I would love to work with him when I'm in U.S. Congress to pass the law. I, I see eye to eye with President Trump and many things, but I just don't like people in Team Trump. They're, like, so fake. Um... Yes, I, I'm real. As you know, I'm real. I care about real things and real people. And I'm not going to lie to you just to open up schools. No, no, that's, that's, that's idiotic. My priority is to save lives. And if I'm going to give you a reason for doing anything, it's not going to be based on lies, you know? Uh, yeah, you open up schools, you're going to perpetuate drug problems. You think like Americans sit around at home doing drugs? I mean, geez, that's how like Trump team makes it sound. It's like it's offensive to all, all of us Americans. Makes it sound like drug problem is, is in the home. That's not true. Um, Americans are decent people, you know. Every American is. I mean, there are Americans who do drugs at home, and 
they're like, you know, minority, you know, delinquents. But the uh, majority of Americans want to maintain their home as a respectable area. They want to raise their kids right. You know, that's the majority of Americans are caught in political system, uh, in poorest neighborhoods. And every parent that I meet, they want to make sure their kids are raised right. And I'm talking about uh, parents who are like in state penitentiary, they're killing like three people. They, they want their kids to be raised right. You know, I mean, you think like criminals want their kids to become criminals? You know, we, you know, criminals want their kids to raise, be raised up right. You know, that's how it is in life. You know, people, parents love their kids. So parents want their kids to grow up right. Uh, and so, um, you know, when I see like Trump, King Trump, like making it seem like, you know, when kids are studying at home, that's like the worst thing that could happen. I'm like, screw you, you know, Americans are good people. You make it sound like America's a bunch of like degenerates, you know? I, screw you, you know, American people are honorable people, you know, whatever political party Americans belong to, they try to raise their children right. Majority of Americans are against gay marriage. Majority of Americans are against abortion. Democrats and Republicans, some of them vote Democrats because they've always voted for Democrats and they see Republicans as a party of rich people, but they don't agree with gay marriage. They don't agree with transgenderism. They don't agree with abortion. Uh, it's like they're not just getting the message right, you know. Uh, so I'm like, screw you, Team Trump, for, for trying to say like Americans with children at home are going to be like more problematic. You, 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 you're like insulting the American family, you know. I mean, geez, majority of Americans are Christian, you know. And maybe it's because like Jared Kushner is Jewish and Ivanka, uh, Ivanka Trump converted to Judaism. That they like look down on all, all of us Christians, but it's insulting to hear that like children living at home are going to be like delinquent. That's just insulting to all of us. It doesn't matter if Americans, like we are like just elementary education, it doesn't matter if we have like high school education only or college education, uh, it doesn't matter if we're working class, you're insulting us, Kim Trump. It's just offensive. Don't tell us that having our children at home is worse than having children at school. You know, I mean, James, you know, like, you, you, you think so little of the parents, American citizens, how are you going to get the votes? If you have such no regard for American citizens, how are you going to get the votes? You know, it's ridiculous. You know, President Trump, you need to fire people in your team, Trump, uh, who just want to insult Americans, you know, because... Over 80% of Americans won't have a college degree. You know? So you so like, you know, your your rich kid, your rich kid's wife, husband, you know, they don't know what Americans are like. The majority of Americans are like, we work hard for our living. Like, you know, I'm starting working as a nurse right after I finish my classes because I need the money to pay for rent and food and stuff. You know, obviously I want to save lives, but I also need to pay for stuff by working. This is how most Americans live. You know, we have to, you know, it's not like, you know, billion dollar, uh, you know, billionaires with like bank accounts. We don't live like that. That's not America. President Trump, you need to get rid of, rid of, you know, like, I don't know, you may have to get rid of like Jared Kushner and Michael Trump. Because like a lot of things coming out of uh, Team Trump is very offensive, you know. It's like, you know, educated, liberal, elite, pseudo conservative stuff that comes out of there. Ridiculous. Americans don't think like that. Americans actually think like you, President Trump. I think this is a school on your own. I like lose the rich kids. <laughs> you know, because we like you, President Trump. We just don't like what's coming out of you know, Jared Christian and Ivanka Trump's mouth, you know? <laughs> you know? I mean, we like what's coming out of your mouth, President Trump, you know? I like your support of Confederate flag and Confederate speech. I, I love you, President Trump, for that, you know? And I'm sure you got more votes because of that, yeah? Because this is America, you know? This is the South. Majority of Virginians, you know, they, they are proud of their Confederate heritage, you know? That's like majority. So, um, yeah, I mean, so, so President Trump, you just have to follow your instincts. That's what got you a billion. That's what made you a billionaire. That's got, that's got you elected in 2016. Lose the rich kids, you know. Just follow your instinct, President Trump. You have a good instinct. You know, uh, so, yeah.
I mean, I, I think Jared Fisher, if I'm going to lose, if, if I'm going to come and lose your vote, I mean, it's kind of ridiculous. The ridiculous thing, too, that President Trump's team members say is they said, oh, there's so much, like, abuse at home. Like, we need to have school so, so they could come to school so the teachers could see that the children are abused. Uh, so they could prevent it. I'm like, huh? What the hey? What the hey? What the hey? Like, even Dr. Redfield said this. I'm like, Dr. Redfield, what the hey? What the hey? And you know, Dr. Redfield is a director of Center for Disease Control, but I don't like him that much. I like Dr. Fauci because Dr. Fauci doesn't say idiotic things like this. Because I think Dr. Fauci came from like a working class family, right? I'm not sure. Like, so he understands how working class people are. Like the Red Kill must be like silver, silver spoon fan from a rich family. You know, just <laughs> doesn't understand like how poor people live. You know, I, I'm an immigrant from South Korea. My dad's a Christian pastor, so you know, we're poor. Having Christian pastors will make a lot of money. Uh, my dad lived, our family lived under the poverty line, you know, uh, until my dad retired. Yeah, because he, he, his pay wasn't high enough to pull our family out of the poverty line. And my mom and dad worked together as a team, and she didn't get paid because she's the pastor's wife. You know, so, um, you know, old school Christian pastoring, right? Uh, and so we lived under the poverty line, you know, like, Going to McDonald's once a week, that was like a highlight of our week. And we always ate at home. Once a week, we go to McDonald's and have like $1 Big Macs. And I'm like, oh, you know, that's like, my sisters are like, we live for that, you know, $1 Big Macs. You know? <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, I mean, geez, you know, I mean, people don't know what poverty means. People don't know how normal people live, you know, like rich people. And like, so, so they say stupid things like this. I mean, Dr. Redfield comes from a wealthy family, never never had to use his hand to work in his life, you know? I, I'm sorry to insult you, Dr. Redfield, but the kind of things you said today in the uh, U.S. House of Representatives uh, subcommittee on coronavirus, I watched it for three hours because, like, I do that, uh, and then I submit a weekly tracker to uh, Georgetown University School of Nursing and Health Studies, you have the summer tracker thing. So I did it, you know, uh, because I'm curious, but also because, you know, um, we have this time sheet we have to submit for doing things that's healthcare related. So I want to make sure I'm up up in the up on the news. Since I'm going to be starting as a nurse, you know, um, at the hospital center, I want to know all the things that, that are up there, right? And, and I, I pass the information to you. And also this show is kind of helping every one of you, right? It's a uh, public health announcement, you know. Uh, this is basically nursing education. I'm providing you with nursing education about COVID-19. So um, when Dr. Redfield says like, oh, we need to have schools to like reduce, uh, you know, like child abuse. What does that mean? You see what I'm saying? That's so offensive. Who says offensive things like this? Dr. Redfield is in fact insinuate, not just insinuate, he's, he's directly pointing the finger at Americans saying, we need to open schools to arrest your parents from abusing your children. I'm like, what the hell? Who talks like this? For God's sake, who talks like this? We're God-fearing people. As you know, I believe that all the churches should be open of uh, providing Christian moral services because churches provide morality, right? Um, but like for Dr. Redfield to say, we need to keep the public schools open uh, so that we can reduce like, child abuse. So what do you think happens from June to September? June, July, August, three months in summer vacation. Is Dr. Redfield saying they bring three months of summer vacation, there's rampant child abuse going on in America? Do you see how ridiculous that sounds, Dr. Redfield? I mean, these are the idiots. And it's not, I, I didn't just hear this from Dr. Redfield. I heard like King Trump talk about these things. I'm like, what kind of idiotic thing is that? Because every school, every public school doesn't have school. June, like July, August, and um, June, July, August, right? I mean, there are year-round schools. I taught at an year-round school. Peabody Middle School is year-round. We started uh, July and we ended June. 
So it's like year round, 365 days a year. So there are year round schools, but most schools, like 99% of the schools, have like three months off in the summer. So you're telling me, Dr. Redfield, that American children are being, being child abused for three months in the summer? So what are you saying? That we should open schools all year round, 100% of our schools, to prevent child abuse? Do you see how absolutely ridiculous that sounds? No. I mean, Dr. Redfield, you're like, you gotta get, get out of that mode. Poor people, middle class people, working class people are more strict with their children than rich people. <clears throat> you know, uh, you know, you know, poor people, working class people, middle class people, they go to church, they try to live a decent life. That is what makes America, America, you know? Working class Americans in uh, Midwest America living in Ohio, they try to live a moral life, you know? Just because you're like rich, you know, like rich people, you know, are promiscuous with sex, you know, and stuff like that. That's not how normal Americans live, you know? It's, uh, um, people try to live a decent life, you know? Um, and they try to raise their children in a decent way. This is America, you know? Dr. Redfield is like trying to like make American parents look like they're the problem. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. Um, the problem is, and you know, I was glad to see uh, U.S. Representative Jim Jordan uh, emphasize that we need to keep our churches open because I totally agree with U.S. Representative Jim Jordan. He's someone I can work with in U.S. House of Representative on Christianity issues, bringing America back to God. You definitely see eye to eye on that issue. Um, but I was glad that he made that emphasis today. Uh, because that we need churches to keep American society moral, but for Dr. Redfield to say we need to open up schools to get rid of or reduce child abuse, that's just absolutely ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, yeah, it's like um, in America is a Christian country with a Christian conscience. Uh, so there are criminals, there are evil people, there are people who do marijuana. These are all like people who, you know, who, who don't represent the goodness of America. Um, but uh, there are people who follow the Bible, oppose gay marriage, oppose abortion. You know, majority of Americans are decent. You know, they don't go around abusing their children. You know, so Dr. Redfield is just absolutely ridiculous. You know, uh, closing schools down will reduce societal evil far more than opening up schools. Um, but obviously, here at Christian Kim Independent Canada for U.S. Congress and Business Agency, I want to close down schools primarily to save people's lives from COVID. That's the priority right now, right? Um, so, um, yeah, but President Trump, you gotta follow your instinct and you gotta really get good people. Because you really have like armpit of America, you know, in, 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 in Trump, you, you need to like shake that up, you know, you need to bring in some good Bible-believing Christians who uh, think like fundamentalist uh, uh, Christians who are a majority of America. You need to like get rid of all these rich kids from in Trump. They're ruining it for you. They're ruining it for you. Yeah, you need to get like, like fundamentalist Christians in there if you want fundamentalist Christian votes. There are over 200 million evangelical Christians in America. We all think similarly. Majority of Americans think like me here at Christian Camp, independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Christians hate this country. If you're like a rich, rich slob, rich, you know, Jewish kid, obviously you don't think like most Americans think like here at Christian Camp. Because you're Jewish. There's only 6 million Jews in America. This is a country of 330 million Americans. Over 300 million People in America are Christians. They think like here at Christian Camp. They think like the position that I put out here. Yeah. I mean, they don't think like six million Jews. Majority of Americans don't think like Jews. Whether you're black, whether you're Latino, whether you're Asian, whether you're white, you don't think like a Jew. There are only six million Jews in America. So like, you have like rich Jews, like, I mean, they don't represent America, right? I mean, geez, you know, President Trump won on the ticket, you could say Merry Christmas again. 
that's the kind of message that resonates with us Americans. You know, I here at Christian Game, I represent the United States of America. I my views are the views of American people. That's why you should watch this show, President Trump, every day. Force every member of Team Trump to watch this show so they learn from your Christian kid and come to understand what Americans are like. You get school in America. This is America. This is America. So, um, yeah. America is not one person and Tifa, liberal progressives and universities. America is here at Christian kid. Independent candidate for U.S. Congress and Virginia State District. This is America. My platform, Bring America Back to God, that is America. A country of over 300 million American Christians. Yes. Over 300 million Americans are Christian. We believe this. If you don't like what we believe, leave our country. This is a democracy ruled by the majority. You don't like our belief, leave our country. Yeah, this is the United States of America. This is God's country. You don't like it, leave. Yeah, so uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm here at Christian Kim, independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Virginia State District. And my platform is Bring America Back to God. Yeah, because God is great. God created all these beautiful women to be wise for you. But liberal progressives want to make them lesbians and take your pleasure as a husband they have sex with these women every day, or one woman, or one man, every day until you die, and have beautiful children with, they want to take that away from you, these li liberal progressives. That's why they're evil. They want to take your happiness away. And I stand for your happiness, your right to liberty, <clears throat> pursuit of happiness, and life. So vote for me on November 3rd, 2020. Uh, in the general election. Um, yes, Americans are dying at the rate of uh, around 1,500 per day. Uh, today we have 1,256 uh, dead in the last 24 hours. This is summer, folks. It's not winter. There's no cold, really. There's no flu. There's no strep throat, really. I mean, geez, there's like really nothing going on. Nice summer, and there are 1,500 people dying. You can imagine how many people are going to die in winter. You may die, so you should go and have fun in the beach. I mean, this is TGIF, you know? I mean, you have one month to have fun in the beach. Are you gonna, are you going to throw that away? Because some winter time is going to be hell. It's going to be dark and dreary. Movie theaters are closed. You cannot go to baseball games, basketball games, football games, hockey games. You will not be able to do anything this winter. You know, um, so have fun while you can because you have like a month before the beach closes, you know. Jesus, God's gift to you. Go to the beach. Have fun. You know, swim with the fishes, for God's sake. You know, uh, uh, do some fishing. You know, get some fish, you know. Take your fish, grow your fish, put your fish in your soup, you know, do whatever you need to, to uh, have a good, uh, good and fun summer. You know, we have one month left. This is July 31st, tomorrow is August 1st. You have one month left to have all the fun. One month, that's it. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, today is a birthday of uh, Jake and Roland. So, I want to say happy birthday to you. Yay, J.K. Rowling, happy birthday. You know, she got a lot of credit with me because uh, she opposed transgenderism. It's not the right thing to do. God created man, man. God created them male and female. I mean, geez, when you look at the baby in utero, they have a male organ, they have a female organ, even if they're both before they're born. There's a gender, and all you freaks, weirdos and freaks out there who want to like cut up boys penises and put a vagina in there you are a freak you are weirdo freaks you transgender people you're weirdo freaks you those who support transgender people you're weirdo freaks weirdo freaks harry agrees harry agrees 
you are a weirdo freak if you're transgender. You're a weirdo freak if you uh, support transgenderism. You're just a weirdo freak. Can I get a five? Can I get a five? Yeah. So um, God created you male and female. Respect God. You know, God the creator. Yeah. Yeah, that's one good thing. Not sending your children to, uh, to public schools. You know, you can protect your children from all these brainwashing liberals who want to make their son have a sex change to become a girl at age 11. And you don't think that goes on in Fairfax County Public Schools? Why do you think Fairfax County Public Schools want to open up schools? Because they want to brainwash your children to have a sex change. This is, this is transgender-friendly Fairfax Public Schools. That's why they want to open up schools, so they could have they can take your children to have sex change. Yeah, why do you think they want to open up schools? Arlington County Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, Fairfax County Public Schools, Small Street City Public Schools. These are like transgender evangelization schools. They want to make your children to transgender or gay, lesbian, LGBTQ. They have like a mission to make your children into like transgender. That's why they want to open up their school because they want to make sure they can indoctrinate your children to get sex change. And you, you, why do you think these Democrats want to open up schools? Because they want to make sure they can brainwash your children. They don't want your children under your influence. They want your children under their influence. That's why Arlington County Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, Fairfax City Public Schools, Foster City Public Schools um, want to open up schools they could indoctrinate your children in liberalism, right? They want to control your children's minds. That's why they want to open up school. They're willing to risk having thousands of your children die so they could, they could brainwash your children. That's what it's all about. Because you know they could give education at home. Washington, D.C. public school is doing it. You know how when some people try to take your children away from you, so you get suspicious? That's what they're trying to do. Arlington Public Schools, Alexandria City Public Schools, Fall Street City Public Schools, uh, Fairfax County Public Schools, they want to take your children away from your presence and put them in their presence so they can like brainwash your children, right? I mean, you should suspect people who want to take your children away, right? There's COVID-19 going on, people are dying, they still want to bring your children in. Knowing that your children can get COVID because they want to brainwash your children to become gay people. Yeah, that's what they want to do. You know, that's, this is why liberal progressives are evil. As I have said many times, you must vote all the Democrats out of Arlington County Board, uh, Alexandria City Council, Falls Church City Council, Fairfax uh, County, County Board is all evil. Yeah, all these liberal Democrats, they want to like, push transgenderism upon your children. We need to turn Virginia's 8th district, 11th district, 10th district, right red. And you're gonna do it, because you, I know you guys are good people. We're gonna, we're gonna turn the Northern Virginia bright red. Yeah, with conservatism. Yeah, we are gonna bring America back to God. You and I, we are in this together. Yes, America back to God. I suffer, you suffer. Right? Right? Because we are in this together. We want to bring America back to God. That's who we are. Christians. Yeah. That's over 300 million American people. If you don't like Christianity, you can leave our country. This is Christian America. Uh, so, uh, yeah. That is love. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So I'm an uh, independent candidate for U.S. Congress of Virginia's 8th District. And I believe in Christian America, that Christianity is good, that Christian America is good. And I defy Dr. Redfield, who tries to portray all Americans as like child abusers. I mean, it's highly offensive, Dr. Redfield. Yeah. If I were President Trump, I'll fire Dr. Redfield on the spot, but you know, I'm not President Trump. I mean, just, if somebody says on a national TV, yeah, we could open up schools because all the American parents are like child abusers. I'm like, geez, man, that, that could lose you your election. You know, it's just offensive. And it's just plain not true. 
Americans are decent folks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's look at the numbers. 153,311 people dead. And confirmed cases are 4,558,994. Um, and top five uh, is, uh, what is Omar doing there? <laughs> oh, I guess there's a typo. Uh, top five cases in the world. Number five is on Oman, the South Africa. Sorry. Oh, I can't believe there's a typo there. Oh, that's just, oh, it's upsetting. Um, but yeah, so United States is number one with 4,558,994 cases. That's 153,311 deaths. 3% are died. So we went from 4% uh, to 3%. So yay, that's good news, right? One good thing about having a lot of cases is that death rate goes down. But it's still bad because the number of people who die actually still goes up. So I guess, you know, it's not too much to clap about, but, but anyways, 3%, it used to be 5%, 6%, 5%, 4%, we're 3%, so maybe we can bring it down to 2%. So let's see. Brazil is uh, four, uh, number two in terms of cases in the world, 2,662,485 cases. Deaths are 92,475, so 3% like America. Uh, so Brazil, a lot of people are dying. It's really sad, you know? Um, India is number three, and that's a shocker that India is now becoming number three. Um, I feel bad for India. You know, as you know, I'm an adjunct professor uh, in India in Jewish studies and uh, social theology. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I hope none of them are dead. None of my students are dead. Uh, yeah, so India is 1,636,000. I mean, 1,638,827 cases. Deaths are at 35,745. 2% uh, are dying. Number four is Russia. They have 838,461 cases. And 13,939 uh, people have died in Russia, 2%. Um, so Russia should be worried. You know, once you hit over 10,000 mark, you know, you're going to start worrying a little bit. Uh, Oman, it's not Oman, it's South Africa. South Africa really has to worry. I mean, it's definitely like, it's climbing exponentially, suddenly. Yeah, if I was South Africa, I would worry. 493,183 cases, 8,005 have died, 2% have died. Uh, yeah, but you know, I, I like, uh, you know, J.K. Rowland. She was courageous to stand against like transgender people who are trying to say, you know, there's no difference between sex. Uh, she still has to go further. So she still has a long way to go, but she's taking the right direction, right steps. Obviously, we all need to oppose gay marriage, LGBTQ rights. Uh, England is a problem, you know, uh, uh, the Church of England is very liberal, that's why the Puritans ran away from Church of England, right, and started in America uh, in 1620, Mayflower, because the um, Church of England was really liberal back then too, it's always a problem, you know, yeah, that's why, you know, Church of England doesn't really get much respect in America, sorry England, but anyway, uh, yeah, you see Jacob Rowling, she's an attractive woman, you know, uh, this was like, I guess uh, I had a Halloween party, and Hermione is there. Um, yeah, Hermione, she went to Brown University, and I taught Jewish studies at Brown. Uh, I consider going back just to, just to teach Hermione. <laughs> you know, she's cute, you know, I mean, but anyway, uh, let me see her. You know, she's like, what, 24 now? So she's still within the marriage, but the boy is 18 to 26. Who knows, you know? Uh, I'm still single, you know, um, so, yeah, and these are the Harry Potter books, and um, J.K. Rowling, you know, she's attractive, you know, if you're a woman, you should, you should really focus on getting married, she's happily married, she has a top pet dog, she sometimes tweets the picture of her dog, and so she's really happy, she's happy like a clown, you know, married, happy in there with a dog, because I feel like 18 to 24, you know, uh, find your happiness, find your man, get married, have children, you know, have, you know, have a dog if you want, have a cat if you want. 
Well, get married when you're attractive, you know? Yeah. Now, uh, obviously, you know, these are the kind of women who have the highest chance of getting the men they want. Because I, I assure you, 99.9% .9 of the men want to marry women like that. <laughs> you know, men are superficial. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian pastor, Christian elder, Christian deacon, Christian, you know, humans are human. And in fact, you know, even before the fall of uh, man, God created me to be very beautiful. So hey, Adam said, this is the bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. And the uh, Bible always emphasizes beauty of women, right? Isaac said, you know, his wife was beautiful like when they met. Um, beauty is important to God. Beauty is important to people, you know? And when you're getting married, the number one important thing is beauty. Physical beauty. Can I get a five on that? Physical beauty is the most important thing that a woman has when she gets married. There's nothing more important. I'd rather marry a woman in these photos, any woman in this photo, even if she doesn't have a high school diploma, than a woman with a PhD, five PhDs. Because, you know, you don't have sex with PhDs. You have sex with these women. And obviously, when you get married, you have sex. And when you get married, you want to marry someone who you want to have sex with. That's what marriage is, right? In fact, St. Paul in New Testament says you should have sex. He gives instructions about that. Sex is important to God. Sex should be important to you in Christian marriage. So yes, women who are Christians, one of your Christian duties is to make sure your body looks like that. I would say that's a Christian duty, yeah. Um, it's not an explicit Christian duty, but it's an implied Christian duty uh, because obviously in order to be fruitful and multiply, the guy has to have an erection. Uh, uh, and obviously for God to have an erection, you have to have a nice body, right? And so, I mean, not all guys, you know, but it helps. So having a nice body uh, that contributes to male erection and ejaculation in the context of a marriage is essential part of Christian reproductive system. And the commandment that God gave is be fruitful and multiply. So sex is a very important part of Christian marriage. So I'm going to tell you like it is. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to hide the truth. I'm not going to be like hitting around the bush. Because you may die from COVID. You may die from COVID before Christmas. A lot of Americans are going to die from COVID before Christmas. I'm going to tell you how it is. So you don't miss out on what you need to bring joy in your Christian marriage. So if you're a Christian woman, you should seek to have a body like that. Put some makeup on so you look attractive. Well, regardless of, you know, let me just don't make it look like you know you plastered it on your face, but you know, spend some time learning to put makeup on in a subtle way. So have a beautiful body, have nice face. Um yeah, and look beautiful for your husband, you know? Uh, that's how God intended for men to desire a woman's body, but to marry and have sex with the woman uh, that they marry, right? And that's why God says, do not commit adultery. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so um, the point of the photos here is there are sports you can do with your wife uh, or the woman you want to marry. And who knows, maybe I'll meet a woman in Virginia Hospital Center who has a body like that, beautiful like that, that I would want to marry. And maybe I could do some of these sports, you know, during summertime. Um, you, could put, you could throw a football around, right? You know, if, you, if you like it, throw, you could throw a football around. You could do that from a distance. You, know, you could push a distance, throw a football around. You could throw a volleyball around. You could even set up a volleyball net play one-on-one -on -one volleyball. Yeah. Um, you can play frisbee. You don't have to be close to each other to play frisbee. Um, you can snorkel at a distance. And I think underwater you can't really uh, get COVID. So, and, you know, I mean, I guess you could get COVID. I don't know. I don't know much about that, but probably underwater uh, there's less chance of you getting COVID. Um, 
Yeah, if you can snorkel together, you can ride a boat together, make sure you're more than six feet apart. You're outside, it's like, you know, uh, so it's safer, but you gotta be six feet apart. Um, you go surfing together, I mean, you're surfing at different places. You go fishing together, make sure you're six feet apart, wear a mask. You can kick around soccer ball together. You can play ping pong, you're generally six feet apart. Ping pong is inside, so it's a little bit more dangerous. You gotta be careful. You can play badminton outside. You play tennis, generally badminton or tennis. You don't need to go to each other, right? I think to pick bike rides together and bike trails. Make sure you're like socially distancing and if you don't talk to each other, if this distance is close to six feet, make sure you wear a mask. Uh, try to stay six feet away. But these are some faint ideas for you out there. Those of you who are not married yet, try to get married as soon as possible because COVID-19 is here to stay. Uh, even Dr. Fauci today in U.S. Uh, House of Representatives said he doesn't, he doesn't know when it's going to end. And there was a question that was asked by Dr. Fauci, do you think it will go away? Do you think COVID-19 will disappear in America? He said no. Which means we're going to be living in this condition forever in America. Yeah, that's why we're looking at it right now. Certainly for the first three of the next five to 10 years. So if you're 18, right from high school, I encourage you to get married. You know, get married, you know, why are you waiting? You may die from COVID. You could do 100% online classes and you can get your college degree. Um, college degree is mostly useless anyway in COVID-19 age. Unless you're studying like computer science or you know engineering or something like that, you know, uh, how is it just becoming kind of useless? Um, the survival is the priority, right? Um, joining the U.S. military is an option if you're not getting married. But if you get married, you know, uh, you need to drive a bus, get a license, drive a bus, drive a bus. Go to, go to police academy or fire academy, become a fireman or policeman. They're always needed. Um, you know, but you could you get married and you could start working, you know, start a family, start having children. You don't know when you're going to die, you know, and just start everything sooner. I think that's a, that's a smart way to go. Um, yeah, I mean, don't put off marriage for college. That's like stupid. Because, you know, COVID-19 is for like forever. Uh, we may have a vaccine, nobody's not sure. Uh, here at Christian Game, that's who I am, independent candidate for U.S. Congress and Business Safe District. I don't believe that vaccines will work. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong. I'm hoping that I'll be wrong, but I don't think they will work. Uh, when they develop, none of the vaccines they're working on now will work. That's my theory, but well, let's see. I hope I'm wrong. Um, yeah, but you know, we'll, we'll give you more information as more information becomes available. But focus on getting married. I think that should be your ultimate priority. Um, yeah, and if you have a girl that you know from Bible study or church, you know, go to the beach with her, you know, try to figure out a way to propose to her. Don't waste your time. It's not like you have all the time in the world. You may die of COVID, you know. Your life expectancy may be like much shorter because of COVID too. Uh, because we don't know how COVID reaches your immune system or your body system. You don't know the long-term effects. Like if you had COVID and you survived, you may still die by the time you're like 35. You got it at 20 because your storage system may have been compromised. No one knows what's gonna happen in five, 10 years after you get COVID and get healed. Not healed, but like, you know, you survive it. No one knows. So um, yeah, go to the beach, have fun. Start your family. That should be your priority, you know? Um, yeah, this is the time to start your family. Get married, have a lot of sex, have sex morning, lunch, and dinner, have children, start raising your children. This is the time to do it. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Um, life is short, you know. Don't miss out on life. You may die before Christmas. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that you came, uh, checked up on my show. Uh, I hope that uh, you uh, learned something new uh, today. Uh, and if you get sick with COVID, don't forget, come to Virginia Hospital Center. So uh, here at Christian Kim can take care of you as a nurse. Uh, yeah, it's an exciting time for Arlington, you know. Uh, um, 
Yeah, I've been to basically like what? Maybe more than half the churches in Arlington. So, you know, you've seen me as your kid in Arlington County, <laughs> you know? Um, and I stick out because I'm like Korean guy and I go to black church. I stick out because I'm not black. I go to Hispanic church. I'm not Hispanic. I, don't, I look kind of Hispanic, so I stick out. For the white church, I'm like not white, so I stick out. <laughs> so people remember me, you know? So, uh, yeah, so come to Virginia Hospital Center, you'll see me again. I'm an am amazing nurse, you know. If anybody's going to save your life, it'll be your Christian Kim. So, uh, you're very lucky, Arlington, that I got hired uh, at uh, Virginia Hospital Center. Yeah, you're very lucky. You know? uh, yeah, but, um, yeah, a lot of places want me, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm good at what I do. You know? So, obviously, it makes sense. A lot of, a lot of hospitals want me everywhere. But <laughs> you love the Arlington. Yeah, I mean, if you're in Alexandria, you can still come to Virginia Hospital Center. Just ask for, you know, Virginia Hospital Center, 911. <laughs> you know, you drive yourself there if you have COVID. <laughs> they have like ample uh, patient parking. They make us park like a mile away so you can have all the parking. <laughs> so, yeah, you can Uber over, you know. So, yeah, you can come over there from, uh, you know, Falls Church, fairly close to. Fairbanks County is not that far, you know, it's worth it. <laughs> so uh, maybe I'll see you there, you know. Uh, I'm excited. I'm just going to be starting at Virginia Hospital Center very, very soon, very, very soon. So, uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for joining this show. Uh, as you know, uh, I created this show to save your life and your children's life. So I am doing active advocating because that's what uh, Professor Lorraine Spencer, you know, public health nursing professor, taught us to do. Uh, you know, advocate for your patients, right? Uh, and everybody's my patient now because um, everybody can get COVID and die, right? So I'm advocating for all of you. So success, Georgetown University is going to go 100% online. Many people's lives are safe. Thank God. I was so worried, Hundred people, hundreds of uh, Hoyas would die. Thank God they don't have to die because it's 100% of mine. Um, and thank God, this is the Columbia Public Schools is closing down. Obviously, my, I love my kids the most. But like, you know, I've never been married. Uh, and I don't have children. I hope to get married to a woman who looks like one of these women on the screen. Uh, it's absolutely important for me that you have a nice body. So, you know, do not apply if you don't have a nice body. <laughs> I, I should say that. That sounds mean, you know. But, I, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. It's good transparency. I know a lot of guys lie, especially Christian guys, and say, oh, body doesn't can matter. Oh, what's really important is your Christian faith. What's really, really important is your personality. They're all lying to you. Of course, your Christian faith is the most important, I would say. But... I'll show you 99% 99.9% of the guys who are Christian want a woman with a body like them. I don't care how good of a Christian he is. Because that's how God created us biologically. So don't let anybody lie to you and tell you otherwise. Yeah. And you know, after you get married, you know, get some nice lingerie, you know, and you know visual things are important for men, you know? So within the confine of your marriage, have nice, sexy lingerie, you know, because if your husband is a really good Christian, he may be afraid to ask you to wear a sexy lingerie because he's afraid, like, you will think that he's, like, a sex of pervert. You know how women are. Women think, like, men should not have sexual desire. You know, the feminazis, you know? Don't believe them. Men have sexual desire. And it comes from looking at beautiful bodies. So if you're a Christian woman, I would encourage you to get like sexy bra, sexy panties, sexy lingerie. Uh, if you don't have any children yet, get sexy you know, uh, pajamas. Um, make sure you have a robe in case, you know, you need to wear the robe. So have that robe hanging uh, near your bed in case you need to wear a robe, you know, for whatever reason. But, you know, for your husband, you should look sexy, you know, and you should maintain your body. So get a treadmill or an exercise bike in your room and do that thing one hour or two hours every day. It's important, you know, one of the duties of a Christian woman 
uh, I would argue, is to be the sexual desire of his, of her husband. I think that's a very important part of being a Christian wife, especially in childbearing years. So make sure you lose weight. If you gain weight after the first child, don't be like, oh, I was pregnant, I gained weight, so I'm just going to remain fat. No, 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 no. I would say one of the responsibilities of Christian women is to be sexually desirable to the husband. Because obviously, we want your husband to have sex with you. So make sure you maintain your body. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, if you're fat, you get diabetes and die uh, early. So um, diabetes is for the silent killer. So after you have a child, you know, losing the weight is also important for your own health. So, you know, you kill like several things uh, with one stone, right? You lose the weight, your weight, and to thin. Being thin is like 50% of the battle for a woman who wants to look beautiful. Like, majority of the women who are thin look attractive. You know, it's just part of the game. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm here to, to uh, look out for you. I want you to be happy. And my simple advice that I give you here that is honest and true in regards to the male population is what's going to bring you a great husband that you want, uh, a Christian husband you want. Because I will not marry a woman who's like really fat. I don't care how good of a Christian she is. That's just me. I mean, there may be other men. I'm not ruling it out. You may want to. I would say 99.9% of the men will not. Uh, so I'm just trying to save you a lot of pain. Stop eating that chocolate if you're overweight. Stop eating that ice cream, milkshake, regular soda, or Diet Coke. Better yet, just drink water. Um, yeah, I'm looking out for your happiness because you have to look physically attractive like that to get married with the man you want. Because as I said, I want a woman who looks like that, you know, have that kind of body, right? Most men do. Even men who are marrying um, at 60 want to have a body like that. It's just, that's men are wired that way, you know, and that's the way God created us from even before the fall. What can you do? You know, God's first commandment before um, sin is be fruitful and multiply. The sex was there in marriage before sin. Um, yeah, so number one important thing for Christian women is to remain a good Christian. But number two, after Christianity, that's a given for everybody. So after that, the number one important thing is to have a nice body and maintain your physical beauty. That is the most important thing for a Christian woman from a marriageable uh, age and throughout the marriage life. You must look attractive. Very, very important part of being a Christian wife. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I hope this encourages you to work toward your happiness. Yeah, do not be eating the bonbons, you know. You know, use that exercise bike as watch, you watch TV. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm looking out for you. I want you to be happy. I want you to marry the guy that you love. I want the man that who loves you. Know, I want the guy who, who loves you to continue loving you. You know, physical beauty is important. Yeah. Men are shallow, but that's how men are. That's how they were created from the very beginning, even before sin. They're not going to change. Okay? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm the one here at Christian Kim who will be telling you the truth because Bible is all about the truth. Yeah, I'm going to tell you the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yeah. Can I get a five on that? Give me a five. Give me a five. Five for the truth. Five for the truth that will bring you happiness. Give me a five. I hope that you'll be happy. Obviously, I want you to survive COVID-19. You know, I want your children to survive COVID-19, but I also want you to be happy. I want your children to be happy. Your daughter will be happy if she's thin like this, beautiful like this, and get the guy that she loves who's also a good Christian. And they have a lot of sex in their marriage, have love, and children. It's all part of your children's happiness. I'm going to make sure that people don't lie. Like the truth is known. To Generation Z, why should they be fat and dumpy and not have chance at happiness? No. 
You know, people will tell you, oh, you know, if the guy doesn't love you for you, then he's not worth it. What do they know? They're probably divorced. They probably failed in marriage. I hear our Christian can independent candidate in the U.S. Congress of Virginia. Eight district. Uh, who dated a lot of beautiful women, as you know uh, from my show. Uh, will tell you the truth about how you can be happy and desirable to your husband. It's important. I guarantee you, it's important. It's very important. A lot of men are afraid to talk about it. They're afraid of like feminazi women reaction. So they won't talk about it. But I'm gonna talk about it because I'm an alpha male. And I became an alpha male because I speak the truth. I'm gonna speak the truth for all men in the world. And I'm gonna speak the truth because I want all women to be happy. You cannot say you didn't know the secret to happiness. This is like 90% of the battle to be happy for women. Being thin. You don't have to be born beautiful because there's makeup. Thank God for that. Even if you're kind of ugly, if you're thin and you put makeup on, you look pretty. Yeah, that's how it is. Thank God for that. You know, sometimes God creates stuff to, to, to help you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, but, but thin, being thin, that's you. You need to work on that. Yeah, being thin is half the battle. You want to be beautiful? Being thin is half the battle. Yeah. Um, I would obviously don't get anorexic on, 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 on us. Eat something. I would recommend eating like fruits and vegetables, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Stay off anything like sugary, like cake. You know, I mean, you could have a burger once in a while, you know, you could have a chicken salad, chicken burger, you know, just do what we do it, you know, but you know, make sure you have little portions. Pay attention to your body. Weigh yourself every single day without fail. And if you even gain one pound, just reduce your food a little bit. You know, but make sure you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I want you to be healthy. Just being healthy is part of, um, you know, longevity. I want you to live long and be happy, right? So, uh, yeah, don't be anorexic. Don't be bulimic, you know, either. Yeah, just being bulimic, you die early. You know, you eat and then throw up. No, don't do that. They'll kill you. But eat meals. If you're hungry, just stuff yourself with, like, bananas or apples, you know? And you can't really go wrong with fruit and vegetables or salad. Because if you're hungry, just stuff yourself with salad, you know? Celery sticks, carrot sticks, you know? Yeah, fill your stomach that way. Um... Yeah, anyway, I'm here to look out for you. I'm here to look out for your happiness and and your uh, long life. So you're lucky I created this show, COVID-19 Update by Iran. Without this show, you would not know how to be happy. You do. I'm talking to your generation Z, 18-year-old, who just graduated from high school. How do you know how to be happy? Your mom and dad are not telling you the truth. Your pastors are telling you the truth. No one's telling you the truth. For you to be happy in marriage, you need to have a body like this. You need to you need to work on your prettiness. Grow your hair because men like long hair. Work on your looks. It's important. I mean, you know, in the Bible, whenever good biblical people get married, the first thing they said is, oh, she's beautiful. Read through the Bible and see if I'm wrong. Yeah, it's important. Being beautiful is like, very, very important. After faith, that's like the most, most important thing. Yeah. College degrees, that's not going to get you the husband you want. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, as I said, I'd rather marry any of these women who don't have a high school diploma than a woman who's ugly and fat who has like three PhDs. I'm an alpha male. You know, there, there are guys who are like beta, comma, delta males who to reduce their expectations. I do not. I do not reduce my expectations for marriage. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm an alpha male. But even delta gal, gamma males, they wish they could have the courage to be an alpha male, marry one of, one of these women. Yeah, it's just, it's just one, it's, this is life, okay? I mean, this is, this is how God created men, to love beauty. Um, yeah, it's in our DNA. Every single male in the, in the world. Um, yeah, so um, 
Yeah. So I am going to provide you with information to be happy in life, happy in marriage. Uh, because what good is it if you survive COVID-19 and have a miserable life? What good is it? You know what I'm saying? I want you to be Christian, obviously, because Christianity brings happiness. But I also want you to be desirable to your, your husband. I want you to be desired by your husband. I mean, there is like 0.1% of men who may, you know, who, who, who may be a little bit different in terms of desiring women who are not as physically attractive, you know, like like you overweight women. You know, that's a very small minority. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm glad that you tuned in. I'm here for you. I'm here to give you a five for your happiness. So go out and do some exercises. My recommendation is get an exercise stationary bike for home. Just walk that thing for like an hour a day. You know, eat fruits and vegetables. Have meat, you know, once in a while, but not much, you know. Um, go easy on uh, everything like sweet. Do not eat it. That's the best way. No, no chocolate, no ice cream, you know. You can have like one bite of chocolate, one bite of ice cream, one bite of cake. But you know, anything more than that, you're jeopardizing, you know. So yeah. Um, especially in COVID-19 when people are not walking around much, you need to keep the weight down. Seriously, keep the weight down. Um, yeah, but I see how much I'm looking out for you. I'm like paying attention to every little detail so you can be happy. So you can have romantic happiness, you can be happy. Right, um, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you know, yeah. I mean, people will tell you, Oh, you look beautiful, but you look at the mirror, you, you know, your eyes don't lie, you know, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you can definitely be beautiful because being thin is half the battle. You just go on that exercise bike every day without fail. You know, you wake up, go on that exercise bike for 30 minutes, then take the shower, you know, I mean, just develop a routine, yeah. You can do it, try to lose some weight, you know, uh, try to lose like, you know, ideal body weight obviously is like 100, 115 pounds, you know, when you're like 5'5", five foot five -ish, five, you know, 115 is, you know, around there, you know, give it a um, so If you're above that, you do need to exercise and you do need to go cold turkey, you know, sensia, and chocolate, cake, and ice cream. If you're between 18 to 24, you need to give that up. I'm serious, you know, give it up. Just think of it as like 365 days a year, Lent. Give it up. All chocolate, all ice cream. Yeah, get yourself married and then you gain some pounds because, you know, Christian men are not supposed to get divorced. Very good Christian men. So you could probably gain some weight. Um, yeah, it'll be fine because you're married. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I pray to God that my wife will not stay in wait until we get married. It's, you know, I can't get divorced, you know. It's, I'm a Christian man, and Jesus said don't get divorced. So I just hope she won't gain a gain weight. I just hope, I hope. <laughs> you know. You know, professor, I, you know, I have some professors, there's a professor so thin. I'm like, I, I pray to God that my wife will look like that. You know, like one of my nursing professors, Paula, uh, she was my uh, clinical instructor at Illinois you know, Fairfax Hospital, and she's, she's, I think she's, you know, she's, like, she's older. Uh, I don't want to, you know, say, you know, exactly how, but, you know, she's older, and she's, she's so thin, you know, she's really attractive. Uh, I'm like, man, I hope my, my wife is attractive like that, you know, and she's a her age. Uh, you know, I, I mean, that's like, I start praying for that, you know, because that's like, uh, and you know, uh, pray, Professor Lorraine Spencer. You know, she's you know she's older, but oh, she's still attractive. You know, she's still thin. You know, I hope I pray to God. I hope my wife looks like that. And my wife is her age. You know, I mean, geez, you know, being being thin, that's that's important. You know, um, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm nursing professors are great. I love my nursing professors. I'm so happy. I'm at. Virginia Hospital Center because I could get to see my nursing professors regularly, you know. Um, it's Virginia Hospital Center is like less than five miles from Georgetown. I mean, I'm so excited, you know. Uh, this is uh, 
yeah, this is my home. You know, I'm in Arlington. I taught at, uh, uh, you know, uh, Wakefield High School, which is like one mile and a half from here. Actually, it's like a mile from here. I think it's about one mile from here. And Virginia Hospital Center is like two miles from here. <laughs> it's like my home. It's like my neighbors. Like people like, uh, <laughs> you know, this is like my neighborhood, you know. So I'm happy as a clan, you know. Yeah, so, uh, but anyway, uh, so I uh, hope I'll see you at Virginia Hospital Center. Well, actually, I should say that because if I see you at Virginia Hospital Center, it's probably because you have COVID or some kind of health condition. So, yeah, I guess I should say I hope I see you at Virginia Hospital Center. But if you do get COVID or if you do, like, have a health condition, come to Virginia Hospital Center because you'll probably see me. Or you may see me, you know? So you have a, you know, you're sick and you're miserable anyway. You need, like, Something to cheer you up, right? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. So I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, so I hope you'll be uh, well, and your children will be well. And uh, yeah, so uh, so I'll bring you some more exciting content tomorrow, uh, so that uh, you know, uh, so that uh, I can help you uh, survive COVID nineteen and find your happiness. And hopefully you're already happy. Uh, so if you're already happy to maintain your happiness, help your happiness grow. But if you're not happy, and some of you may not be happy, I am dedicated to making sure you become happy. I'm going to try to find a way. Give you advice. Give, show you the way so you can be happy. So tune in every day. Um, this is a daily show. COVID-19 update by Hiram. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.